Today we are checking out the Live Logic Custom USB MIDI Controller Foot Pedal. Now I've checked out foot pedals before, but this one is different. And I want to start this video by saying two things. One, Blackstar has sponsored this video. So this is a sponsored video. And the second thing is, I really like this foot controller and there's no way to get around saying that has nothing to do with the fact that they sponsored this video. Like I said at the top, I have seen foot pedals before. I have made videos on how to create your own custom foot pedal setup with just a sustain pedal. Um, none of them quite live up to this one. Today, what I want to do is really demonstrate why I think that. Caveat I really want to start with here is that, you know, I'm not a full on guitar player. I play guitar, but I'm not a guitarist, you know what I'm saying? And also like I have a very distinct way of making beats and making live sessions. So I'm really going to talk about how this MIDI pedal works in my type of workflow. Flow. And of course you all know that I usually like to show these off in a session, like actually make some music with it, actually do a live session with the gear before I talk about it. And so we're going to loop some guitar, we're going to grab the MPK Mini, and we're going to create a really cool session. So let's go do that now, and we will talk about the setup after. Oh, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Tatro, your electronic music mentor. All right, so that was just the performance, just the start. What did you think of it? Let me know in a comment down below, but stay tuned because now we're going to fully break down how that performance setup worked and how this functioned using Ableton Live. All right, before we get into talking about the 
looping pedal and how I use that in the session. I want to just talk about the very basic gear that I have right here, gear that you've all seen me use like a hundred times. So of course, first we have the Akai MBK Mini, one of my favorite mini MIDI controllers, of course. I'm choosing this over something like the launch key because I want to just play notes and drums on this thing and then also use it to control some effects. And I know that I'm gonna have the launch pad mini here to help me launch clips and stop clips and handle that side of things. So if I can split the difference and have both of these rather than just the launch key, um, this serves a better purpose, especially since I don't use more than eight drum samples in this session. So I'm actually able to just survive with these eight pads here. So of course I play stuff like the drums here. And these samples are all from Splice. It's a very, very simple kit. We have two snares, a little rim shot, our kick, of course, like a crash impact sound for when the section starts, a hey shout, and then the little quote that I play during the intro. This is the world you've made yourself. Now you have to live in it. And that is also from Splice, too. With the knobs, like I said before, I'm also triggering effects with these. So I'm doing stuff like triggering beat repeats, which I have on my master channel. So if I just play this scene really quick, I've got a filter on my drums. That works for all of the drums that you hear in this session. I've got a row of beat repeats, quarter note, one sixth, so triplets, eighth notes, And then like a pitch fall setting, which is either really subtle or very loud, depending on when I trigger it. The final effect is actually on the distorted guitar, and it actually helps me blend and get into the end. So on its own, the distorted guitar usually sounds like this. Very dry. Actually, the reverb is turned up a little bit. Let's bring that back down. So most of the session is just... Very simple, but then when I'm transitioning towards the end, I want to not quite fade it out, but I want it to drift into reverb land, I guess you could say. So we turn that up, and that's how I end up getting to the ending. Very wet, allows me to more seamlessly take out the guitar at the end. But yeah, and of course I use the Akai MPK to play the 808. as well as the synth lead. And that's about it for the MPK right there. Like I said before, I have the Launchpad Mini here, which I don't use a ton during the session. There's only a couple key times that I have to actually use it. Um, one of the times you'll see in the performance, I'm actually cueing in the initial um, drum kit loops. So beyond the drums that I actually played, towards the end of the song, there are these big epic rock drums, and I cue those in with the filter down, actually, and then I end up filtering them in. So here they come. Another quick thing you'll notice here is that I have two clips, which are part of that drum section, right? The first one is this initial loop here. Kind of just a very basic backbeat. The next one is slightly heavier. And they transition to each other seamlessly. Same thing for this next track right here, which is actually the ride symbol that you hear. Just the ride symbol. Ride and a crash, actually. So I wanted to layer that on top of the drums because this drum loop was mostly hi-hats there. And the way those are triggering to themselves automatically is through follow actions. So I've set up this clip right here to have a follow action so that after it plays through the full eight bars of this loop, it will go ahead and automatically transition to the next clip, which is why as I cue these, you will see they'll start to flash. The clips below them will start to flash because they're queued up and as soon as they're done, they're going to play. And as soon as they make their way through that eight bars, we'll end up at the next section, the next clip. It's got that really nice fill and then we're transitioned.
that's really cool. And the way I have that set up with the ride, since there's no ride at all before that, I have an empty clip here, just an empty clip of eight bars, just so that I can set up that same follow action so the ride can come in seamlessly with this other drum loop here and I don't actually have to touch anything because I'm gonna be like playing it out on the guitar. So I'm hands free there. The last way that I use the Launchpad Mini is for stopping clips. And that only happens at the end. I end up stopping those drum loops as well as the drums that I played in on the MPK. And then eventually I also drop out the distorted guitar, which is why I turn up that reverb, stop the distorted guitar, and the reverb tail still hangs. It's not an abrupt cutoff. Audio interface here is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. That's just really basic. Allows me to plug my guitar in to my computer. And if you notice this little Tascam recorder right here, I actually did use that during the session. That is just being used here to capture the audio so you all can hear um, what I'm actually demoing from the computer. And then I'm monitoring out to my JBL Club One headphones. Since I talked about all the MIDI sounds that I used and the drum loops, I will go ahead and just show off really quick how I got this guitar sound. There's actually three different guitar tracks in this uh, session. The first one is the main riff. And I'm using Guitar Rig for all of the guitar effects here. Um, I am side chaining from the kick a little bit. I have some EQ, I'm sweeping out just below uh, 100 hertz right there. Um, but let's go ahead and look at Guitar Rig. I'm using some presets, so I even forget. This one's called Sultan, Sultans of Pop, which I really like. Just a very nice, clean pop guitar. Then we go into a very similar sounding um, guitar setting here, which actually might be Sultans of Pop again. It is, but this is more of a lead instrument, so I've got the send reverb and delay turned up. You'll also notice that these are kind of panned a little bit left and then a little bit right to give some spatial uh, feeling. And then the final one is the distorted guitar that we already talked about. It's, you know, your standard rock distorted guitar, a little bit of pop punk vibes there. And this is actually a preset called All the Blink Things. So we obviously know that that is um, kind of taken from some of Blink-182's guitar tones, but I really like it. Uh, I've added a little bit of reverb on top and I'm doing a little bit of EQing to take out some problematic frequencies, boost a little bit of brightness, and it too has a little bit of send and delay, as well as, Oh, that's it. We have the width turned up a little bit. So it's a little bit wider in the stereo field. You hear how mono that is? I wanted a nice wide sounding guitar. And that's the guitar tones. All right, so without a doubt, this performance would not have been possible without this foot controller here, the Live Logic by Blackstar. Now I've used other MIDI foot pedals before, um, and I've even done a video on how you can set up a sustain pedal plugged into something like your MPK to get almost a similar effect, but this takes it to the next level. And the reason for that is, if we look in Live's preferences, um, I believe Blackstar, Blackstar might be the only or one of the only um, MIDI foot pedal creators that actually has a script for Ableton Live. So you see it shows right up here as a control surface, Blackstar Live Logic. Um, and then we can set it as our input and output, et cetera. And I've done zero custom mapping for this controller for this session, I should say. I believe the possibilities are probably a lot more than what I've done here but I wanted to use it just out of the box, like with the feature set built in. The whole point of saying that it has a script written for it and it's compatible directly with Ableton Live as an Ableton control surface means um, it does a lot of really smart things. So let's just start by talking about recording a, a loop in general. So if I hit the number one, which is my first track, this is actually automatically assigned to be uh, my first track. So let's just start by recording a loop. I'll get a little count in at the beginning.
Okay, so that's a basic looping technique, right? And now we have our loop going. All I had to do was trigger the loop and then trigger it to come back. Notice also the feedback on the foot pedal too. It's counting. So I can actually see what bar and what beat I'm on in case I've lost the one or I want to be sure that I'm doing a four bar loop or an eight bar loop, etc. I've got that feedback there. So that's kind of basic, but notice the next thing. The next thing that happened is without touching anything, after recording that loop on track one, the Live Logic MIDI pedal automatically armed track two, which allows me to fully go right in to looping my lead. So let's actually do that and watch for that again. Watch for the next track to immediately be armed. So the drum rack is gonna get armed next, right after I record this guitar loop. Immediately the guitar, the transition from guitar to drums. And then right from there, it goes to the 808. Etc. Etc. So that is the first thing I want to point out is how convenient that is. I don't have to use another controller to arm something else, arm the next track with my hands. Um, I don't have to custom map any of these buttons to be A, an arm button and B, a record button. It's already happening. It's happening automatically here. Um, but say we wanted to go back to a track, like say we wanted to go back to our main riff. Well, we could just click this button here again, record another riff here. I don't like that, let me play something different. So notice this very basic way that it works as well. When you're on a track and you've already recorded a riff, as soon as you hit that button again, it's gonna record into the next clip slot. So after you've got a loop going already, you wanna record a new loop, cool. Um, just push the button again, it goes into the next clip slot. What about stopping and starting clips? Now, I do use the launch pad to stop and start a couple clips in this session, but on the live logic pedal, you can also just hold down the button and it stops and then starts. What if I don't like a clip? I wanna get rid of it. All I have to do is double click and then I can record again. And you notice that the 808s are right now armed. Say I wanted to skip the 808 or something. 808s are on track four. Notice how this is all lining up perfectly with the live session. 808s are on track four. What if I wanted to skip the 808 and go to the lead? As this is playing, even though the 808 is live, I can go ahead and just press five. and we went right to the lead because I just pressed number five. And now, it automatically armed my next track, the distorted guitar. So you get this free flowing performance because the controller is doing most of the work that you don't actually need to be doing. Like I don't need to assign a controller to arm tracks as I go. I don't want to have to use my mouse, click in, delete something I don't want, um, start recording in the clip slot, the particular clip, clip slot that I want to. It's all very fluid and it's designed in a very smart way. So tracks one through six line up with one through six on this pedal board. And that's about as far as I took it for this session because I thought that that was convenient enough for me. Everything beyond track six in my session here is not something that I play. So tracks seven, eight, and nine are just drum loops, meaning that uh, all I have to do is trigger them on and I do that with the launch pad here. Um, I really don't need to be hands-free for that. 
all the instruments that I play, it would be much easier to be hands-free so I can either play the keyboard, play the guitar without quickly pressing record or pressing arm and then jumping in out of track. When you get caught up in that, what often happens in looping performances is you have to let things extend a lot longer because you need time to transition between instruments, but not with this foot pedal because it's just doing the transitions for you and it's reacting in a very smart way. Also, just like from a practicing perspective and working with the pedal, it's very convenient to uh, say, oh, this take wasn't good. Let me go ahead and delete the drums, delete the clean lead, delete all those main riffs. And let's just keep that synth and we'll just go right back in and start playing again. I can even delete right from the actual like playing and just start over by double clicking. Very, very convenient. I was not expecting that from this controller, but it means a lot when a company goes ahead and makes a great live script uh, for their gear. It's actually what separates gear that's just okay. Um, you know, you plug it in and it kind of, you know, it works. You can play instruments with it, like say in the instance of a MIDI controller or whatever. Um, gear that has like a specific script for your DAW, like a launch pad is a great example. Like it's made for Ableton Live. I feel like with this script right here, this foot pedal is made for Ableton Live, even though I know it works with other DAWs as well. Something to look into when you're buying gear, like, oh, is it compatible with my DAW? Sure, the Akai and PK Mini is compatible with my DAW, but it doesn't launch clips like the launch pad does. You know, just things to think about. I challenge you to go back and rewatch the performance video. Um, even though there isn't a camera on the foot pedal specifically, you will be able to now reverse engineer what's actually going on as I press through all the different parts and record all the different parts with the foot pedal. All right, so I think it's pretty clear that I am a big fan of what Blackstar did with their MIDI foot controller. I mean, having a custom Ableton Live script really just takes it to the next level and they put a lot of real thought into how it would function and how an actual live performance functions. One thing I realized I did not mention as I sit back down here at my desk, well, it is battery powered, first of all, I didn't mention that, but also the LED feedback is very helpful. So when you are about to loop something, the light will flash rapidly. When something is playing, it will be a solid light. And when you're recording, it will be pulsing with the tempo of your track. I thought that was really cool and I forgot to mention that, but it's great because even in like my sunny living room, um, sun blaring down at the pedal, I can still see these LEDs and the feedback is really helpful to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Like I said at the top, this video was sponsored by Blackstar, so feel free to take everything you heard in this video and everything you saw with a grain of salt, but I, I really can't express enough how um, when companies put a lot of thought into the compatibility of their controller with a DAW, it's what brings things to the next level. And I mentioned it earlier with, you know, something like the Launch Pad Mini. You have it again here, I have my Launch Key 37 sitting in front of me. Um, when the people who are making the hardware have the actual software in mind and create something that's made specifically for the workflow of the DAW, uh, it, it just makes things that much better as opposed to a controller that kind of lives in its own world, you know? And that's why I think this MIDI foot controller uh, kind of rises above the rest. There's lots of other features involved with this MIDI controller that I'm sure you'll find a lot of other videos by folks who like are real guitar players and use it for, you know, those purposes. But um, for me and my setup and for folks who watch these videos, I think that if you are looking for a hands-free way to loop and run Ableton Live sessions, um, look no further than the Blackstar Custom USB MIDI Controller Live Logic. Big piece of criticism there. What a name. Can we, we can come up with something better than that, right? All right, but that's gonna be it for today. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. Give the video a thumbs up and a comment always helps get the video out to more people, more engagement, you know, the more the algorithm takes over, that kind of thing. And uh, thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro, your electronic music mentor. Have a good one. <laughs>